When you look at all of the variations in both the sayings of Jesus and the accounts of events in his life, what we do not have, we do not have an eyewitness account. Now that may surprise some of you. We now have names in our Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those names did not appear in those Gospels until the second century. The fact is, we don't know who wrote any of them. We know whom the tradition came to associate them with. One of them, Luke, tells us he was not an eyewitness. He tells us he's in the third generation. And he's borrowed what he knows from a lot of different folks and put it together in a story. Um, the, pro the fact of the matter is we do not have a single eyewitness account. Moreover, we don't have anything written by Jesus himself. Jesus was almost certainly illiterate. That's a little shocking to modern people. But there were no schools in Nazareth. None. And Israel had the lowest percentage of literacy in the entire Roman Empire. One half of one percent. Um, we have later, almost certainly, legendary stories about why Jesus could not read and write. And they seem to be explaining away what was an embarrassment to the elite of the Roman Empire. But Jesus himself didn't write a book. So we have no eyewitness accounts. We do not have a chronology of his life. Mark created the first one. It's, one, it's not even one year long, it's one dry season. And Mark probably intended it as, if you will, symbol of what Jesus did every year during the dry season. But how many years did he actually do it? We don't know. In John's account, as I said, it's three years long, um, but it's so hit and miss and it doesn't correlate very well with Mark's that you very quickly get the idea that the chronologies are also theological. They are not historical. These writers are trying to tell you what they believe. They're not doing news reporting. So we don't have a chronology of Jesus' life. We don't have much historical information about his birth. We have no account of his childhood. There's one childhood account in Luke. And it's, it's both interesting and puzzling. Y'all remember the story? He's at the temple with his parents. They all head back to Galilee. He stays behind and he's talking with the elders. Now, if you go and go to the uh, textbooks for Greco-Roman schools in which students were taught to read and write, um, you will discover something very interesting. Luke, who clearly has a very, very high level Greco-Roman education, by far the best writer of Greek in the New Testament. One of the schoolboy textbooks tells us that if you're going to write a, a story in praise of somebody, you must include one childhood incident. And you ought to pick out an incident that provides an omen for what the adult will eventually become. So Luke does exactly that. Is it a historical event? Almost certainly not. Does it tell you who Luke thinks Jesus is? Absolutely. Um, but that's the only incident we have in the whole childhood of Jesus. Now, a lot of early Christians didn't like that. They wanted more info, so they created other Gospels. We have the infancy Gospel of Thomas, the uh, <coughs> Apocryphon, it's called of James. That means the secret Gospel of James. <laughs> That's, I mean, these are full of stories about Jesus. And they would not appeal to a modern audience, folks. He crushes a bird in his hands and kills it. And then he laughs. And then he lets it go and it comes back to life. And then one of his playmates um, insults him, so he kills him. And then he brings him back to, I mean, it's, it's bizarre stuff. 
but it sort of filled the need for early Christians who said, I would like to know what the heck was going on with this kid when he was young. And I'm not impressed. 